Why is it so hard for me to be happy? Ava wondered, looking at herself in the mirror. Other people have it figured out. Why can't I? I don't like my job, I don't get along with my family, and I can't find love. Is it me? Am I the problem? Yes, replied her reflection. There is a lot you should be doing that you don't. There is a lot you could be changing, but you won't. It was her reflection who spoke back to her, but it looked different. It was Ava, but not quite. It was harder, tougher somehow. She was taken aback. This is not what she wanted to hear. How could she be the problem? You don't understand, she stammered. It's not my fault. Things are never easy for me. I always get the raw end of the deal. It doesn't matter. Everybody has it hard. The reflection was stern and determined. You have to find a way to work through it. Ava shook her head. No. You don't understand what I'm going through. You're right. But this reply came from a new source. Startled, she looked around and she saw a different reflection altogether. It was her, but again, different. This girl was smiling warmly back at her with so much love and concern in her eyes. Nobody understands you, said the reflection. You're incredible, wonderful, beautiful. It isn't your fault that your life is not going your way. Stop blaming yourself and don't let others blame you. I see you for what you are, absolutely perfect. Don't you dare let them change you. Ava was overcome with relief. She would have denied it a moment ago, but this was exactly what she was yearning, aching to hear. But her joy was interrupted. Don't listen to that, called her first reflection. You know I'm telling you the truth. The only path to happiness is to look within and figure out what you could be doing to make your life better. No, Ava said confidently, I don't need to change. Everyone else is the problem, not me. That's right, said her new reflection, and she beckoned her forward. Come, I have so much to show you. And Ava followed eagerly, climbing through to meet her reflection. And suddenly she was surrounded by people, all clamoring to touch her and smiling with enthusiasm. Look, there are so many people that love you for who you are, and they're all just like you. They've been suffering just like you, and they need you. They need your voice. Together, all of you can do so much good for the world. There are far greater issues that need your attention. You're so right. Why am I worrying about what I could change about my life when the world needs me? The other people nodded in agreement and pulled Ava into their ranks, and they all cried out, shaking signs in the air. You need to change. It was Ava's dreadful boss, and as usual, he was yelling at her. Your work isn't good enough. This is your last warning. I told you, I told you you were not working hard enough, and now you might lose your job. Ava felt overwhelmed at the sight of the judgmental face. Maybe you're right, she admitted. Maybe I need to- No, don't listen to that. Your boss is a terrible person. He wants to keep you down and he has never appreciated your work. Why should you have to change? You're perfect. He's the problem. He needs to change. Yes, she cried with sudden relief. He's had it out for me from day one. You're right. Who cares about this job anyway? There are bigger problems in the world that need me. Yes, the world needs you. It needs your voice. And again, she was surrounded by people smiling encouragingly at her. And she smiled back and picked up a sign and joined the protesters as they shouted. So what do you do? Ava was on a date. Oh, I'm in between jobs right now, she said, a little embarrassed. My boss was constantly out to get me, so I stormed into his office one day and told him exactly what I thought of him and his stupid work. Oh, her date responded. Clearly, he felt a little awkward. But I'm very passionate about activism, she added. There's so much wrong with the world today that I feel compelled to do something about it. I mean, no one with a conscience could just sit on the sidelines, right? He nodded some more. There's so much injustice in the world. She went on. There's nothing worse than a person who just chooses to do nothing. So, how did the date go? Her reflection inquired. 
It was fine. Any chance of a second date? No, she replied. You know, you shouldn't have been talking down to him and lecturing him all night and telling him how you quit your job. It made you look so frivolous. I wasn't lecturing him. Was I? She suddenly felt embarrassed and afraid. Maybe I shouldn't have- No, you weren't, called out her encouraging reflection. You were educating him, and it's your duty to educate people like that. Yes, exactly, she said emphatically. Besides, he was probably intimidated by someone with strong opinions. This always happens to me. And she easily brushed away her fears. Why does it matter what he thinks of you? He doesn't understand how amazing you are. Besides, you have a higher purpose. That's right, he's insignificant, Ava said confidently. Again, she found herself surrounded by nodding, affirming faces who took her into their fold as they once more chanted. No! Sweetheart, your dad and I want to talk to you. It was Ava's parents. We know you've been going through a really difficult time, but we don't like the way you've been treating us. We're tired of your constant lecturing. It has to stop. What? How can you say that to me? You know how much pain I'm going through? I've lost my job. I'm running out of money. Everything in my life is falling apart and all you and dad can think about is yourselves. Besides, I'm not lecturing you. I've been trying to educate you. You should be thanking me. Your parents are just trying to tell you that your behavior is hurting them. Her reflection intervened. Just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean you get to mistreat everyone in your life. Ava shook with anger. Why is it that you always take everyone else's side? Why are you always against me? Because you're in the wrong. No, I'm not, she said quietly. You're miserable. You have no career. You have no relationships, not even with your mother and father. I don't want to hear it. You keep blaming everyone else. You're refusing to see the truth that you are the problem. I said I don't want to hear it. I am trying to help you. No, you're not. You're trying to destroy me. Just leave me alone. The mirror was silent, just staring back at her with the same harsh expression. Ava, you don't need anybody else. Ava smiled with relief. It was the voice she was hoping for. We have everything right here, said her encouraging, smiling reflection. That's right, she said, smiling back. You're amazing. You're perfect. Don't ever let anyone try to change you. Thank you. You understand me. The rest of them, they, they just don't get it. They keep trying to put me in this box, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of having to constantly explain myself. They just don't understand what I have to go through and I shouldn't have to change for anyone. I'm amazing. You're perfect, said her reflection, smiling ear to ear. Exactly. I shouldn't have to change to fit their idea of an acceptable version of me. You're perfect, repeated the reflection, unchanged. Yeah, Ava replied, her grin fading a little. The world needs you. It needs your voice. Yes, Ava said softly. Yes. She said, her voice a little stronger now, the world needs me. And she picked up a sign and walked to the crowd of protesters and joined in their shouting. But the chanting was growing softer, and Ava could feel fear washing over her. The fear she had managed to keep at bay for so long was suddenly too much to bear. And she fell to the floor. I'm running out of money she whispered. It's not your fault, said her reflection. The eyes were full of sympathy. My family hates me. They don't understand you, smiled her reflection. I'm miserable. You're perfect. Her reflection reached out a hand to her. Stop saying that, Ava said. You're incredible. Stop it, she commanded. You're perfect. Stop it! She shouted and she sprang to the mirror and slammed her fists into the smiling, sympathizing, unchanging face. The mirror shattered and the voice stopped. The room was dark and silent now. What the hell was she supposed to do now? She fell to her knees and sobbed into her hands. I don't know what to do. Please, help me. What do I need to do? Please, tell me. There's a lot. It was a familiar voice, 
Ava stopped crying and looked up. She saw the distant reflection and desperately ran over to it. Tell me, she cried out, wiping her tears. Tell me, what do I need to do? There's a lot. Are you finally ready to hear it? Ava paused, thinking carefully. I'm s I'm scared, she finally said. What if I can't change and I can't fix my life? I'll have no one to blame but myself. The harsh face softened for the first time. At least you will have tried, said her reflection and reached out to her. Ava took a deep breath and nodded. She took the proffered hand and allowed herself to be pulled forward. Climbing through, she felt the gentle weight of an arm around her shoulder. And we'll do it together. This story was written and narrated by Baggage Claim. If you're interested in content exploring our current cultural issues and how we can move forward to a better future, check out the Baggage Claim channel and be sure to subscribe. Link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and a big thank you to After School.